Okay, in the last lectures, uh, we have discussed about uh, the series voltage regulators. So, in that we have discussed about the fixed voltage regulator and uh, adjustable uh, voltage regulators. So, the basic uh, principle of this uh, fixed or uh, the adjustable voltage regulators is we will use this series uh, power transistor in linear mode. There are some limitations of uh, this uh, series linear voltage regulators because we are going to use this uh, power transistor in linear mode. So, the various limitations of this linear voltage regulators are as follows. The first limitation of this uh, linear series voltage regulator is as the frequency of uh, the input signal is less, normally 50 hertz. large value of capacitance is required to reduce the ripple. That is uh, we know that in case of uh, voltage regulator normally we will give this 50 hertz signal from the AC source and we are going to connect to a rectifier. If it is a full wave rectifier, we will get the output waveform like this. Then we will pass through the capacitor filter. So, that the output of this capacitor filter will be having ripples. This is the type of output will be obtained from capacitive filter. Then we will get the output which is almost a DC with some ripples. And we are going to apply to the voltage regulator. then we will get regulatory DC supply. Here in order to reduce these ripples relation is we take this diagram. So, this is the full wave rectified output signal. And then this is the output of the capacitor, capacitor charges and discharges, there will be some ripples. If this voltage is Vp, the peak voltage, if 
this voltage is V ripple. And between this peak to peak, the time duration is delta t. And the V ripple is given by Vp into delta t divided by Rl into C. Here Rl is the load resistor. So, here in order to reduce this V ripple, we have to use large value of capacitance. So, large value of capacitance means uh, the area or uh, size of this uh, regulator will be more. So, this large value of capacitance implies size of regulator is more. This is one of the limitations of a uh, linear series voltage regulator. The second limitation is this will have less efficiency. So, efficiency is here defined as the output voltage by input voltage. So, we know that in case of regulated power supply. Uh, this is the series pass transistor which will act as emitter follower. Here V in which is unregulated power supply, unregulated voltage is applied here. And here this is V out, this is regulated output voltage. This is power transistor. And uh, we know that this V in is at least 2 volts greater than output voltage. Suppose if I want to connect this output to the TTL IC. So, we know that TTL IC will operate say with a voltage of plus 5 volts. If input voltage is say 10 volts, if output voltage is 5 volts, then the efficiency is 5 by 10 into 100 this is equal to 50 percent. On the other hand, if input voltage is 20 volts and output voltage is 5 volts, efficiency is 5 by 20 into 100, this is 25 percent. So, at the most we can have 50 percent efficiency in case of a series uh, linear voltage regulator. This is the second limitation of uh, the uh, series linear voltage regulator. Third limitation is more power dissipation. because this transistor always operates in the linear region. More power is dissipated in the transistor. Whereas, if I use this in the switched mode, 
instead of operating in the linear region if I operate q1 saturation and cutoff modes So, when this transistor Q1 is on, this will almost act as a short circuit between V in and V out. Either short circuit or at the most, this will be having very low resistance. because of that uh, the current is very less and the power dissipation is very low. As a result of that the entire input current I in will be transferred to load I out is approximately equal to I in the maximum current will be transferred and maximum power is also transferred. If Q1 is off then this will act as almost open circuit as a result of that no power is dissipated. Input for this one is in the form of uh, pulses then the power dissipation will be less if we operate this uh, q1 in saturation and cutoff modes. Okay. So, this principle will be used in uh, switched mode power supplies the next type of the power supply is called as switched mode power supply. SMPS. Are also called as switching regulator. So all the limitations of this uh, linear uh, regulator can be overcome by using switching mode power supply or switching regulator. Here instead of having the 50 hertz, we will operate at high uh, frequencies of the order of say 40 kilo hertz. Because of this high frequencies, the size of the capacitors will be less thereby the size of uh, power supply will be less when compared with the linear power supplies. This was the first limitation of the linear uh, voltage regulators. The second uh, limitation was efficiency is less whereas here efficiency is more efficiency of this switched more power supply is of the order of 70 to 90 percent. And the third drawback is Switched mode power supply will be having less power dissipation compared to the linear regulators because here the transistor operates in either saturation or cutoff regions. Okay. So, because of this uh, regions, uh, switched mode power supplies are uh, more popular in many of the electronic appliances. So, we have a lot of applications of the switched mode power supplies, especially in personal computers. We will use this switched mode power supply and we have in uh, traffic secure and railway systems. We 
in television sets you have switched mode power supplies you can use this for the motor drives also this is more popular power supply when compared with the linear power supplies okay. if you consider the block diagram of this uh, switched mode power supply First, it will take the input supply voltage. Normally, fifty hertz, two twenty volts. This will be applied to the input rectifier and filter, which we already discussed in the previous slide. so that you will get a dc output voltage which is not perfectly uh, regulated there will be some ripples will be there so this type of output will be there this red color output at the output of this uh, rectifier and filter now this will be applied to a high frequency switch So that the output will be having a output of this switch will be having high frequency rather than the 50 hertz because of that the capacitance uh, values will be uh, less thereby the size will be less. This high frequency switch output will be connected to a power transformer. This will be applied to output. rectifier and filter so that the output will be a regulated DC power supply. Then a part of this one will be applied to the control circuit. to nullify the variations in the output voltage due to uh, load current variations or input variations. So, this control circuit basically controls the on off durations of this uh, high frequency switch. This is the overall block diagram of this SMPS which is a switched mode power supply. So, the output of this high frequency switch will be we have on and off and this is on, this is off, on, off. So, alternative will be on and off depends upon the, the control voltage that will be generated by this control circuitry. Then this power transformer will step up the voltage and this output rectifier will make this uh, unipolar and then uh, it uh, removes the ripples thereby this will produce the regulated output voltage. If any changes in the output occurs how do it will regulate the output uh, DC voltage, how does it uh, nullifies the changes in the DC output voltage. So, for that if I consider this control circuitry internal details, this uh, consists of uh, a comparator whose non-inverting terminal will be applied to the V reference and this inverting terminal will be applied to the 
a part of this output voltage if I call this as VO then this VO will be sampled through the voltage divider similar to the linear series voltage regulators. Here this will be beta into V naught where beta is R2 by R1 plus R2. And this is V reference. So, this output will be applied to PWM that also can be implemented by using another operational amplifier. Here a triangular wave is generated. This is triangular wave oscillator. Then this will produce a voltage which will be used to control the high frequency switch. If I call this as V control voltage at the output of this comparator which will act as the error amplifier which we have discussed in the earlier lectures. Then what will be the waveforms of uh, V control versus this output of this PWM pulse width modulator. is the triangular wave which is applied to the one of the input terminals of the PWM. The V control is this one. Then what will be the output uh, of this PWM? Between these points, so this triangular wave amplitude is greater than V control. So if I connect to these two places on this minus then if the triangular wave amplitude is more than the V control voltage then the output of this PWM will be a positive pulse. If triangular wave amplitude is less than V control then the output will be negative pulse. As a result of that what will be this one during this portion from here to here triangular wave amplitude is greater than V control. So, we will get positive pulse and uh, from here to here triangular wave magnitude is less than V control. So, this will be having negative. Again between here to here this will be having low state, here to here high state. And so on. This is one complete period. this is T on, this is T off. Duty cycle is defined as T 
t on divided by t on plus t off. So, this t on duration will be controlled by this v control. So, for this value of v control this is the duration of t on. If I increase or decrease this uh, v control, suppose if I take this v control uh, a value which is less than this, suppose v control is somewhere here, what happens to this duty cycle? What happens to t on? t on will be now having more duration from here to here this is t on and t off will be less so as a result of that if uh, if you increase this v control if you decrease this v control compared to this this v control is less because this has v control dash then what happens t on is increasing thereby duty cycle also will increases because t on plus t off is constant so t on if t on increases d also increases on the other hand if i take a value which is less than this v control say this value is call as v control double dash then on time will be only this much this t on is this this is uh, less than this t on so if v control is increased from this reference v control value this is a larger value, this is a lower value. If you decrease, then duty cycle will increases. If you increase this V control value, implies what happens T on T on decreases, thereby duty cycle also will decreases. This is one of the important uh, result. Okay. So, depends upon the V control. If V control is uh, more, duty cycle will be less. If V control is uh, less, duty cycle is more. Okay. Now, how does this duty cycle uh, will uh, generate the DC voltage? I will consider three different cases duty cycle of say 50 percent then on time off time will be same. This duty cycle is 50 percent. So, what is the average value of this one? If I assume that this is 10 volts, this is 50, 0, this is 100. How do you find out the average value or DC value? by t time period here will be 100 integral 0 to t if the signal if we call as this as x of t x of t dt is the expression for the average value or dc value of the given waveform. Okay. So, in this case what happens this is t is 1 by 100 integral 0 to 50. 0 to 50 this is 10 volts 10 into dt whereas 50 to 100 0 okay. that integral becomes 0. So, this is equal to 10 by 100 into the integral of dt is t between the limits 50 to 0. So, 50 minus 0 50 this is 10 into 50 by 100. is equal to 5 volts. So, this is at the center of this, this is the average value.
If I take two other different cases where duty cycle is less than 50 percent, greater than 50 percent. If you take the second case, if duty cycle is less than 50 percent. And you can see that duty cycle is twenty five per cent. This is twenty five, this is hundred, this is eight and volts. On time is twenty five divided by hundred into hundred is twenty five per cent. Duty cycle is equal to on time is twenty five. My total time is 100 into 100 percent which is 25 percent. Now what will be the average value here? So according to this formula 1 by t is 1 by 100 only integral 0 to t becomes 25 from 25 to 100 it is 0 and this is 10 volts into dt this is equal to 10 by 100 into 25 is equal to 2.5 volts this average value will be somewhere here If I take the third case where duty cycle is more than 50 percent, This is 75, this is 100, this is 10 volts. You can see that on time is 75, divided by total period is 100 into 100 is 75 percent. Now, what will be VDC here? 1 over 100 integral 0 to 75, 10 dt this is equal to 7.5 it is here this is the average value so here the conclusion is the DCR average value is directly proportional to the duty cycle. If duty cycle is more, DCR average value is also more. From the previous conclusion here is, if we control uh, decreases, duty cycle increases if we control uh, increases duty cycle decreases. So, based on this if I come to the operation of this one, suppose if V naught increases due to the load variations, then what happens? If V naught uh, increases, then what happens to V control? V control is proportional to this V reference minus beta V naught. If V naught increases, 
then the negative term increases overall this value will be decreases that is V control decreases. So, if V control decreases duty cycle increases if duty cycle increases then DC value also will increases. So, this output voltage is going to control this high frequency switch. So, which will reduce the variations in the V naught. Similarly, if V naught decreases due to the load variations that will be compensated through the similar type of the action which you have explained for the case 1. So, in that way we can regulate the variations of the output using this control circuitry and high frequency switch. So, this uh, SMPS can operate in uh, 3 modes. One is step up, suppose if I want to use a prompt programmer which needs 25 volts. So, the input voltage will take 5 volts then we will step up to 25 volts using this SMPS and the second uh, mode step down. Suppose the input voltage is 12 volts and if you want to control TTL IC which requires 5 volts then you have to step down this voltage from 5 volts to 5 volts, 12 volts to 5 volts this can be performed by using switched mode power supply. Third one is inverter mode. I have say input voltage is 5 volts and I want to control operational amplifier which requires plus or minus 12 volts. I want both the positive voltage as well as negative voltage. In such case we will operate in inverted mode this 5 volts will be converted into plus or minus 12 volts using SMPS. So, this is about this uh, switched mode power supplies. So, we have discussed about the fixed voltage uh, regulator which is linear and as well as adjustable and uh, different to this uh, linear regulators is a switched mode regulator where the transistor operates in saturation or uh, the cutoff regions unlike uh, the transistor operates in linear region in case of a linear regulators. Because of this uh, saturation and cutoff regions the SMPS dissipates low power and it acquires a high efficiency of the order of uh, 70 to 90 percent. Because of this uh, advantages most of the electronic appliances uh, uses this uh, switched mode power supplies. So, in the next lecture we will discuss about the data converters. Thank you.